Today I'm going to teach you how to do a door key system so you can actually get a key in order to open a door inside your game. And I will be using the example that I did in the last video where I showed how to create a door opening system. Now you can really have whatever kind of door opening system that you have inside your game. So if you have something already, you don't have to have what I have here. You just basically need to have a interact thing that opens a door and then you're pretty much set to go. Before we get into the actual video, I do want to mention that there is many ways to create a door key system. And, you know, I did write down quite a few different ways to do it. And I did actually have multiple examples of how to do it that I wanted to show you. But then I thought, oh, the video is going to get too long. So we're just going to do two different ways. We're going to do the short way, which is the fast and easy way to just set up a door key system. And then I'm going to show you if you want to make it a little bit more in depth with a inventory system. I was considering if we should do something using events and delegates in this episode. So, you know, we could actually have multiple things happen when you actually pick up a key, but I decided, you know what, let's, let's have that as an extension, maybe in a future tutorial where I show you how to do multiple things when something happens. So, but today we're just going to stick to the fast way of doing it and the inventory way of doing it. And of course there will be timestamps below, so you can just go down and skip forward. So if you don't want to see the fast way of doing it, then you can just skip forward to the inventory way of doing it using the, the timeline below. And just to mention it, yes, this will also work inside 3D games. A lot of people, they have this idea that because we're making something in a 2D or 3D game, then it's not going to translate over to the other one. But in this particular case, it's just a how to open a door using a key example. So this is going to work in both of them. The first thing I want to do here is just kind of show you a little bit about what I have inside my project here, since it's going to give an idea about what exactly you need to have prepared in order to actually watch this video here. So as you can see, I actually decided to split up my hierarchy game objects inside categories. So as you can see, I have something called setup, managers, and environment. And you can just create these by creating a empty game object and just rename them into something. And then of course, make sure you click them and actually reset them up here so they're centered inside your scene. Uh, what I then did was I just basically inside setup, put in my main camera and my lighting. So I just pasted that in there. Inside my managers, there's nothing so far since we're going to use this one for the second example where we actually talk about how to create an inventory system. And then I went ahead and created a environment, which is basically just where all the game objects inside my actual scene that I can see are stored inside that particular category there. So as you can see, I have a player, I have a ground, I have a door that is red, which is also an empty game object where I just inserted my door and the switch for the door that I need to jump on in order to actually open the door. And then I also created one for the blue door, just so we have a blue door with a blue switch. And then I have one down here that I actually decided to hide since we don't actually need to use it just quite yet, which is a keys empty game object. And if I were to toggle it on, you can actually see I have two keys in here that are visible. And these are going to be the keys that we're going to you know, run into and then it's going to unlock the doors that we want to open in there. So uh, let's actually go ahead and play this just to show you what I mean by you know, how it's actually working inside my, my game here. So as you can see, I have a basic player controller that just sort of like controls my player. I can jump on top of the switch and then you can see the door opens. I can jump on the same switch and then the door closes and same thing for the red door. But now we do want to be able to pick up a key before these get unlocked because right now they're just sort of unlocked from the start. So that's what we're going to build in this video here. So the first thing you need to do is actually get a key which I did actually, I just downloaded one off the internet and I inserted it into my game. It's just a basic sprite and I put it inside twice. Now, one of my keys are going to be the red key and one is going to be the blue key since I have two doors inside my game here. I actually just went ahead and pasted in my key and then I gave it a color and then I gave it a box collider so we could actually walk into it and I made it into a trigger. And that's basically all I did for both these keys here. So we actually, you know, could do something with them, but we also could tell them apart. The next thing you need to have is a player controller, just so your player can actually walk around and jump and, you know, actually interact with things, which is something that you should have by now, because this is not a player controller tutorial. If you're interested, I do have tutorials on it. So you can just check out my channel if you want to find some more tutorials on how to do this kind of thing. The second thing I have is a door behavior script, which essentially just controls whether or not the door should be open or closed. And it just like toggles back and forth between these two different states. And then I have a switch behavior script that just basically takes care of actually pressing the switch down and actually toggling the door. So it does open and close. And again, if you don't have any of this, I do have a tutorial I just released that shows how to do this. You can just check that one out so you can actually follow along what I have here. Uh, but you don't need to have a switch in the ground or anything like that. Like you could just have the door be the switch so the player walks up to it and when you look at it, then 
you know, you press a button and then it opens the door. It's the same concept there. So you don't need to worry about it not being the exact same thing as what I have in front of me here. The only thing I need to point out here about the switch behavior script that I created is that at some point inside my script here, when I actually toggle the switch, it's going to open the door, right? And you need to know where that is inside your script, no matter what kind of project you're sitting with in front of you, because if it were to scroll down, you can actually see that I have a on trigger enter 2D that actually when I enter my switch, then it actually opens the door. And it does that down here inside the if or the else if statement. It basically just controls whether or not to open or close the door. So this is the point inside my code that I need to be aware that, okay, we need to put in a lock if statement to check whether or not the door is locked because then we don't want to run this chunk of code in order to open the door. So that's what you need to be aware of. So now that you're caught up and you know exactly what I have here, so you can kind of pinpoint where you need to be inside your project. Um, once you have your keys, the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to create a key behavior script. So I'm going to right click inside my scripts folder. I'm going to create a new script and I'm just going to call it key behavior. And then I'm going to take the script and I'm just going to paste it down here below so we have it inside both game objects. So we can actually do something with these two keys here. Then I'm going to open up the key behavior just so we have it in here. And the first thing I'm going to do inside this script is just going to clear the script since we don't need to do anything with the start or the update method. We do, however, need to have a on trigger enter 2D because when the player enters the key, we do want to be able to delete the key from inside the game. So I'm going to create a on trigger enter. Then I'm going to create an if statement where I just simply go in and check whether or not the tag of the game object that actually touches the key is the player tag. So remember to actually tag your player game object inside Unity as player. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and say if collision dot compare tag is named player, then do something. Now, the first thing we do want to do is, of course, destroy the key. So if we actually walk into the key, it should destroy the key. So we don't actually have the key inside the level, even though we picked it up. So I just want to go in and say we want to destroy the game object, which is the current game object this script is attached to. Now, we do need to do one more thing in here, but we can't really continue with this script here until we actually create the lock Boolean inside the switch behavior script or whatever script you might have that actually opens and closes your door. So I'm going to go inside my switch behavior and I'm just going to go below my field since we're going to create all the lock related fields down below at the bottom. And I'm just going to create a Boolean that is going to be named is door locked. And I'm going to set this one equal to true since I want this to be locked as soon as we actually start up the game. And we can actually go ahead and create a comment if you want to. So set door locked status, just so we know exactly what this does. The next thing I want to do is I want to scroll down to that part that I talked about. So if I were to go down inside my on trigger enter 2D, because this is the block of code that actually takes care of opening the door. Um, I do want to run a additional if statement, and I'm going to do this using a nested if statement because there's a lot of people watching this tutorial and a lot of people have different codes. So I'm just going to make sure that, okay, let's create a nested if statement to make sure this works for everyone. So we're going to go and create a if statement. And inside of here, I just want to check if the is door locked is equal to false, because if the door is not locked, then we do actually want to open or close the door. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste all this code inside of is door locked, the, the check that we did here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go down to the bottom of the class and create a method that actually takes care of changing is door locked to true and false whenever we call upon it. Now you could also do this using a property, but I know a lot of people don't know how to use properties inside Unity and just basically changes the fields directly. Um, so let's go ahead and do it the way that I know everyone kind of understands how to do it. So let's actually go down to the bottom here and we're going to go and create a void method. This one is going to be called door locked status. And now this one does actually need to be public because we need to be able to access it from inside the key behavior script that we just created at the start. And essentially we're just going to grab the is door locked and set it equal to the opposite of itself. So we can say equal to exclamation mark underscore is door locked. And that's basically just going to swap it from locked to unlocked or unlocked to locked. In this particular video, we're just focusing on unlocking doors. But if you want to create a system where you can also lock the doors again, then this is going to work for that too. So with this, we can now actually go back inside key behavior. And at the top here, we just want to grab the script that we just went into, which is switch behavior. So I'm going to say we want to serialize field. And I want to be able to grab the switch behavior. And we're just going to call it underscore switch 
behavior, just so we know what this is. Then you're gonna copy it and just paste it inside the if statement and say you want to access the method we just created called door locked status and just run that one. And basically this is all you need to do. So if we were to go inside Unity and actually make sure we drag and drop the game object inside the script. So if we were to go inside by red key, you can see at the bottom here, we do actually have a switch behavior that we need to drag something into. So we do need to get the switch. So I can go ahead and say, you know what, let's go ahead and take the red door and just take the switch and drag that into my red key. Then I can go down to my blue key and just simply drag the one in from my blue door. So we now have something that works. So if we were to actually play this, you can now see that if I were to actually move around, you can first of all see that, oh, we can't open the door because it's locked right now. So we were to pick up the blue key and now go in, you can now see that we opened the door. The red door is not gonna work yet because we didn't pick up that key. So I can just pick up the key, go in, and now we can open the red door. There we go. <laughs> and again, this is the easy way of doing this because you can just basically create a key and then you drag and drop in the switch that it needs to work on and then it's going to work. And of course there are limits to doing it this way. Uh, you can't, for example, have multiple doors that it needs to open at the same time, unless you, again, do some more scripting to actually make that work inside our scripts there. But then we start entering this area where it's just better to do it the more optimal way, which is creating a inventory system for your game. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go and do this the inventory system way. So you can actually go ahead and create an inventory system that checks whether or not you have the key in your inventory before you actually open the door. And this is going to have a lot more applications, you know, inside your games, you know, it's gonna be able to do a lot more than simply doing it this way. And it actually involves using managers, which can in some cases be a lot easier to deal with when it comes to larger games. So, you know, if you're making a very small game, this way that we just did is perfectly fine. If you're making something a little bit larger that's going to have a lot more locked doors, then probably have an inventory system that does it. In the next example, we're gonna go and do this using a inventory system. So as you can see, I actually reset everything. So we're back at the start again. I deleted all the stuff we did with the easy method. And now we're gonna do it using the inventory method. And just to mention it, there's many different ways you can create an inventory system. And there's probably gonna be comments telling me, oh, Daniel, you can also do it this way. And that is true, there's many ways to do it. Uh, the way we are gonna do it is we're just gonna focus on the key system for now. So we're just gonna be able to grab a key and register that we have it inside our inventory. And then we're going to be able to, you know, add objects, add items to the inventory or remove items again if you wanna do that. So with that said, let's actually go ahead and get started on the second example. So as you can see right now, I did also blur out the keys so we can't see them. I do have two keys here that we can, you know, just paste inside our game so we have them there. The first thing we're going to do here is we're actually gonna create a inventory manager and we haven't talked about managers before inside my channel. This is something that is probably gonna be taught for the first time now. Basically a manager is something that controls the flow of your game so you can have a game manager, which is something that you're probably always gonna have inside your game. And you can actually see if you were to actually right click and create a new script inside your folder and call it game manager with a capitalized G and a capitalized M, then it's going to give it a unique icon inside your scripts folder, which is just to indicate, oh, this is the game manager because Unity knows that you're supposed to have one of those. But there's also many other types of managers and it's really just depending on what kind of need you have for your game. So in my case here, I would like to have a inventory manager that actually manages my inventory inside my game. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go inside my managers and I'm gonna right click. I'm going to create a empty game object and I'm gonna call this one inventory manager. Then I'm gonna go inside my scripts folder. I'm gonna right click, create a new C swipe script and I'm gonna call it inventory manager. And then I'm gonna open it up inside Visual Studio. Now, the first thing we're going to do here, which is something that is pretty typical when it comes to managers inside Unity, is we want to make this into a static class, which means that there's only going to be one version of this class existing inside the game. So, you know, you can't create copies of it like you could with any other class. We can create different objects, you know, based on the class. A static class is only going to have one version of itself. So if you make a change to this class, it's gonna to happen to the entire game basically. Another benefit to static classes is that you can also reference things inside this class here without having to actually drag and drop a reference into other scripts. You can just access it directly, which is just more convenient when you have something that is more like top level, like a manager inside your game. So it just makes it a little bit faster and easier. So first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and just clean up the class a little bit so we don't have these inside the class. And I'm going to make this into a static class. The way we do that is by first of all, declaring a public static 
And then we're going to give it the, the type of the class. So right now we have one called inventory. Let's actually make sure we spell that correctly. Inventory manager. And we're just going to go ahead and name this one instance. Then we're going to create a awake method, which is again, built into Unity. And we're just going to go ahead and set instance equal to this which means that this particular instance up here that we just created is going to be equal to this class that we're inside of. So now we created a static class that we can access from anywhere inside our other scripts. After creating a static class, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a list of different items that I can actually pick up inside my game. So I'm going to do that using a enum. So we're going to go ahead and create a void enum. And I'm just going to call this one all items. Now, I haven't actually covered enums inside my Unity tutorials, but I do have a C Sharp course on my channel that actually explains a little bit about enums. Basically, it's just a data type that is going to contain a bunch of constants inside of it. So we have a list of items that we can use for various purposes inside our game. Like in this example here, we're just going to create a list of items that we can pick up inside our game. But it's also very popular to use enums to change the game state inside your game. So let's say I want to go from the main menu to a new game, then you know, a bunch of things needs to happen once we do that. And an enum can help keep track of where exactly the game state is currently inside your game. Are you on the main menu? Are you inside a new game? Are you inside the loading screen? Or maybe you want to pause the game or something, you know, it can do different states inside your game. And an enum is an easy way for us to register which state we're inside of right now. But in our example here, we're just going to go ahead and list out a bunch of items that can be picked up by the player at some point inside the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we have a key that is going to be called red. I'm also going to create one called key blue. And let's just go ahead and create a green key as well, even though I know we don't have a green key or a green door inside my game, but let's just go ahead and do it just to show that we can actually create a list here. So with this, oh, I can actually see we made a mistake here. This should not be void. This should be public. There we go. So now these are all the different items that we have available inside the game, but we do also need to be able to tell which items we currently as the player have inside our inventory. And the way we're going to create an inventory system is by creating a list inside our game. So basically, we just have one long list of all the different items that we have. Uh, so we can actually check if we have certain items and we can remove certain items or do something else. So what I'm going to do at the top here is I'm going to create a field that is going to be a public list. And then we can use the angle brackets. And then we're going to go ahead and state what kind of list this is going to be, like what kind of data type it's going to contain. So in this case here, we actually want to contain all items, which is going to be the enum that we created down here. So it's just going to be a list of these items down here. Then it's going to have a name. So we're just going to call it inventory items. And then we just basically set it equal to a new list. And again, we're going to set the type, which is going to be the all items, parentheses, and semicolon. And let's go ahead and create a comment because I know some people are going to be confused here. This is going to be our inventory items you know, what we currently have picked up inside our character. Then we can also go ahead and go down here and say all available inventory items in game. <laughs> Just so we have something here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create two methods. One is going to be for adding inventory items inside my character. And one is going to be for removing inventory items. Now we're not really going to do anything where we have to remove inventory items, but it's just a good idea to have it just so you can implement it in some kind of way inside your game if you want to do that. So down here, right above the enum, I'm going to go and create two methods. The first one is going to be called add item. So it's going to be a public void add item parentheses and curly brackets. I do want to pass in an item that I want to add to my inventory. So we do need to state a data type, which is going to be the all items data type. I'm just going to call it item. Then I want to go inside and create a if statement. And the first thing I want to do here is I, I first want to check if our inventory already contains a particular item, because if it already does, there's no need to add the item again to our inventory. So we suddenly have two of one particular item. Um, again, if you have something like health packs and you want to have multiple health packs inside your game, then of course, this is something you could consider should not be in there. But it's just a very good idea to run a check to make sure you don't add multiple of the same items. If you just want to have one of that version, 
of item inside your inventory. So inside my if statement, I'm gonna go and check for inventory items. And I want to make sure that I check if it contains a particular item, which in this case here is going to be the item that we pass in. So if it already contains this item, then we don't wanna do something, which also means that we do need to put a exclamation mark in front of it. So this is going to run if we do not already have the item inside our inventory. So what I can do is I can say inventory items dot add, and then I want to pass in a certain item, which is going to be what we pass in here. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and copy paste my method. And inside the second one, I'm gonna say remove item. So we can actually select what item we want to remove. And then inside we want to check if it contains the item. So we do actually need to remove the exclamation mark. And if it does, then we want to remove the item. So we don't wanna add, but we want to remove the item. And again, we can create comments here, add items to inventory and remove items from inventory. So now we have everything we need to have inside our inventory manager. This is a very simple manager, okay? So it's just gonna do a very simple thing for us. So what I wanna do now is I want to go inside my Unity inspector and I want to create a key behavior script so we can actually start doing things when we pick up the key. So I'm gonna right click, create key behavior and I'm gonna paste in the key manager to my two keys I have inside my scene. So I'm just gonna highlight them and drag it in so we actually have it in here. I do also want to make sure that I remember to add in my inventory manager to my inventory manager game object because I didn't do that yet. So now we have it in here. And you can actually see, we can see all the items here. Right now it's empty because we can't actually see anything inside our inventory. So you can actually check them out there. Um, but I do want to open up my key behavior just so we can see what's in here. Inside our key behavior, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete everything we have inside the class since we don't need it. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and serialize field the enum that we have from inside our inventory manager. So I can say serialize field, and then I can actually go ahead and grab my inventory manager dot instance. Actually, when it's an enum, we don't need to grab the instance first. We can just go ahead and say all items. And then I'm just gonna give it some kind of name. So we can say item type. And what this is going to allow for us to do is to go inside the inspector. So if we were to go in here and actually go down to one of my keys, you can see that we now get a drop down that allow for me to pick one of the items. So what I can do is I can say, well, there's a red key here. What items should that be from my list of items? So right now it could be my red key. It could be my blue key. So I'm just gonna say this is going to be the red key. Then I'm going to my blue key and I can set this one to my blue key. So with that selected, let's actually go ahead and create a on trigger enter 2D since something needs to happen once we enter the key. Again, if you're inside a 3D game, this is going to be just an on trigger enter, not a 2D version of this. First, I'm going to run an if statement and I'm going to check if the game object that enters the key is going to be the one that has the tag set to player. So if the collision dot compare tag is player, then do something. The first thing we want to do is we actually want to destroy the key if it enters. So we're gonna say destroy, and I'm gonna go ahead and set this one to game object, which is going to be the current game object that this script is attached to. So if I walk into my red key, it's going to destroy the red key. But before we do that though, we do want to go in and actually grab our inventory manager. And I want to grab the method that we created called add item. So the way we do that is by saying inventory manager dot instance, because that is going to be the static class that we're grabbing here. And then I can access the add item method that we created. And of course we do need to pass in an item because we did have a parameter set, which is going to be the item type that we selected inside our inspector. So right now we're pasting in the item that we're picking up when we walk into this key and then it's gonna go ahead and actually add that to your inventory. So what I can do here is I can actually go back inside my game and we can actually test this out. Just make sure you have your inventory manager selected inside here so you can see all the different list items. And if we were to play the game, you can now see if I were to go inside my blue key, it now registers that I picked up a blue key. If I walk into the red key, you can now see we have a red key in our inventory. So now we have these two inventory items inside our inventory. But even though we picked up the key, nothing is gonna happen yet because we haven't actually told the door that it needs to check for this particular key being in our inventory in order to open the door. So we're gonna go and do that here. So I'm gonna go and go inside my switch behavior script, which is the script that I have that actually takes care of opening and closing the door when I jump on top of the switch. Again, 
This might be a little bit different depending on what kind of project you're sitting in, but basically you just need to have a script that actually opens and closes the door. And that's where you want to do this thing. So below all the fields that I have inside my script here, I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing as we did inside the key. So inside my key behavior, I'm just going to copy my serialized fields where I actually check for the inventory type. I'm just going to go inside switch behavior and paste that in. The basic idea here is that we want to check for what kind of item is required in order for this switch to work. So instead of calling this one item type, we could also call it required item. And if I were to go ahead and do this, go back inside my Unity Inspector, you can now see that if we were to go inside my switch, which is going to actually open the door, we can now select a item type. So required item is going to be right now the red key for my red door. If I go inside my blue door, you can see that we can now pick the blue item. So with this, we now have the proper switches set up to the proper required items. So we can go back inside our code. And at the very bottom, I'm going to go and create a method that is simply going to go in and check whether or not we have the item that is required for this particular door inside our inventory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a public and this one is going to return a Boolean data type. So it's not going to be a void type. I'm just going to name this one has required item just to check if we have the required item. And then if we do, then return this one as true. Now I do want to paste in a parameter, which is going to be inventory manager dot all items, which is going to be the enum that we actually have inside our static class. And this one is going to be named item required. Then inside the method, I'm going to run a if statement. And I want to check for a certain item if we already have it inside our inventory. So I'm going to check my inventory manager dot instance dot inventory items dot contains, which is a method we can use in order to check if it contains a certain item inside our list here. We did also use it inside inventory manager. And we can simply check for the item that we're requiring inside our particular check here. If we do have the item, then return this as true. If we do not have the item, so else, then return this as false. And now we're just gonna go and do one more thing, which is to go up inside our script where we actually open and close the door. So right now inside my onTrigger enter 2 d like I mentioned at the beginning, I do have a simple if and else if statement that just simply takes care of opening and closing the door. And I'm just simply gonna do a nested if statement. And I'm doing this because it just makes it a little bit easier for people, no matter what kind of project they're sitting with, to actually watch this tutorial and be able to follow along. So we're gonna do a nested if statement here. And we're just gonna take all the code and put it inside this if statement, like so. So now if the statement is true, then we open and close the door down here by actually being able to run this block of code. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and grab the method we just created that is going to check or return a Boolean once we do actually run a check in there. So I'm gonna paste that inside my if statement and say I want to pass in a parameter, which is going to be the one that we actually picked up here that has to be required for this particular switch to open the door essentially. So we're going to go back down, paste that inside our method, and that's basically it. So now if I were to go back inside Unity and go inside my inventory manager so we can actually check things over here on the side, if we were to actually play my game, you can now see that currently we have no items inside our inventory. So I can actually go ahead and say, oh, well, we can't open the door. It's not working. If I pick up the blue key, you can now see, oh, we picked up a blue key. It's inside my inventory. You can actually change it over here if you want to do that on runtime, just to mention it. But for now, let's just not mess with the things over here. So now I can open the blue door and close it if I want to do that. And if I were to do this, we cannot open the red door. That requires the red key. So I'm going to pick that up, go back over here, and now we can open the red door. So this is how we can create a basic key system or a inventory system actually that has a key system. I might actually do a separate video on inventory systems, but make it a little bit more extensive. So we actually maybe have some visual elements showing the inventory items on screen. Uh, for now, this is just how to pick up a key and how to actually open up doors if you have the key on you inside your inventory. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this little lesson here on how to create a key system for your game. Like I said, there's many ways of doing this. And if you have another way of doing it, you're more than welcome to share it in the comment section so people can know about it. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.